The type of uh, proof that we're looking at is based on inductive reasoning, and that's informal proof. Informal proof is kind of based on these steps. You make an observation about some pattern or some experience, and then you draw a conclusion. Okay? Again, the conclusion that you draw is a conjecture at that time, which, remember, is an educated guess. And it's based on just intuition. What do you think is going to, based on your observation, what do you think is going to happen? And then after you make a conclusion, um, or you make that conjecture, what you could do is you could then use formal logic to prove that or validate your conjecture. Again, it's not always necessary or possible to do, but the informal proof is usually the precursor to formal proof. And you make an observation, you notice something, and then you can see, uh, is there a way to formally prove that? And so if you looked at this pattern, so here's the figure one, figure two, three, and four, would you be able to sketch the next figure in this pattern? Hey, what's the next figure going to look like? How would you describe it? Each of these staircases, right, has how many stairs or how many boxes on the lower row? So whatever the number is, right? So the fifth one is going to have one, two, three, four, five. And then how many blocks high is each column? Again, the number of blocks high as it is wide. So one, two, three, four, five. And then each one, again, just kind of builds like a staircase. And so that's what our last pattern should look like. So when you model it or, or you, when you see it, and you can draw that conclusion based on what you see. And like I said before, you could then use logical reasoning or a formal type of proof to verify that conjecture. Once you verify or validate a conjecture, it then becomes what's called a theorem. Okay, so when we go start going through the relationships, geometric relationships that exist, we are going to formally prove each one that we can, and then they'll be able to be used as theorems in future proofs. All right, so let's take a look at some patterns to see uh, kind of an example of the type of inductive reasoning you're going to be asked to do in this section. Okay, often it's based on patterns and then making predictions about the next term or in a sequence. And so what I want you to do is just look at these and see if you can predict what the next term is going to be for this place. Did anybody get a number? Michael, what'd you get? Good. 25. Did everybody get that same value? Okay, oftentimes the patterns are going to be based on kind of the counting and the 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 uh, order of the number. So often if you see what is the difference as you move from one to the next, from negative five to negative two we add three, then we add six, then we add nine. So you can see each time we're adding a multiple of three, so the next one will add a twelve, and that leads us to our twenty-five. And this isn't always going to be the case, okay, but often it's a good place to start as far as finding a pattern. Usually you won't. When you're answering your homework, even though I'd probably put on there to make an explanation of it, as long as you find the correct one, you're OK. All right, let's jump down to this lower one first. Okay. Like I said, it's not always going to be based on the position. Because if you were to look at this pattern, Okay, as you go through, from 0 to 2 is plus 2, plus 1, plus 2, plus 1. It looks like there's a pattern, plus 2, plus 1, plus, and it's not plus 2. It's not the pattern that you're expecting. So that means that there's something different to this pattern. Okay, it won't always be based on the, the value or the counting aspect of a number. It might be based on the appearance or the physical characteristics 
of the terms in that sequence. So with that said, you may need to focus not just on uh, what's there, but focus on what's missing and, and identify are there any characteristics of the things that are missing that uh, exclude them from the set that appears in that sequence. So if you look at this example, as we go through the first number that's missing is 1 and then the next one that's missing is 4 and then 7 and then what is unique about these three numbers property wise that you don't notice in the blue numbers. They're all what, Sharon? Sure. Good. So they're all they're all built how? Like what would be a physical property that distinguishes? These three are made with only straight lines, whereas all of these numbers have curves. Okay, so where would eleven go? Would eleven be included or excluded? excluded. What about 12? Included. So the next one in this sequence would then be 12. Okay, so you need to be able to uh, look for that type of observation or pattern as well. Okay, it's not just always going to be numerical. Okay, but look to see does it fit in any specific properties. Is it prime numbers, odd numbers, even numbers, perfect squares, perfect cubes? Okay, anything that be, can be categorized you're looking to see as far as that's concerned. Okay, so here's an example of a type of um, informal proof type of problem or inductive reasoning problem that uh, is from scratch. So see if you can figure out what expression would identify the sum of the first n odd positive integers and see if you can use observations and pattern recognition okay, to find the answer to that. Again you can work with the people sitting near you. If you want to compare your thoughts with theirs. Uh, so the difference with this versus the other ones is they don't actually give you the sequence. So you need to create your own sequence, right? So if we let n equal 1, what is the sum of the first one odd positive integer? It's just 1, right? Yeah. So what if we go the first two? 1 plus the next odd integer? So that gives you a total of four. And what about the first three? Nine. What about the first four? Okay, do you start to notice a pattern here? One, four, nine, sixteen. What are these? Perfect squares. And how do they relate to the number of term number? So once you identify that you you notice this pattern, then the nth term you can identify as being n squared. And so that would be your solution or answer is n squared is that sum of the first n positive, odd positive integers.